Hey, I hope you're doing good. Today we're going to be discussing about a very interesting subject which is called Linux clustering high availability. We're going to be talking about Pacemaker. Pacemaker is an open source cl cluster resource manager that allows you basically to build high available applications and have multiple boxes backing up a specific service that you want to make sure is highly available. Um, Pacemaker is used in uh, air control systems. It was initially signed by Nobel and some other research institutes basically to provide another framework besides the currently existing ones on Linux to have a higher level of control over high availability. So setups that you can build with Pacemaker you can use for example active and passive setups where for example you have multiple hosts and they're bundled together into a cluster by use of a uh, Corosync and Pacemaker as the cluster software. Then you can have some web servers, some database servers, some file servers that are distributed uh, over multiple hosts to distribute over the load and in the instance of a failure on one of the hosts, you can basically have the service automatically migrated for you to one of the available hosts to make sure that these websites, database, and files are uh, constantly accessible. You can have some fancy setups like an active and active setup where you have your loads horizontally distributed over multiple boxes and multiple uh, hosts and then in the event of a failure these servers can be migrated or piggyback over some of the other available hosts and Pacemaker doing all the service coordination for this and um, the monitoring. So how this actually works in um, the background let's say we want to have a very basic cluster with three nodes on it so we can have quorum uh, which we're, we'll talk a little bit more later and we want to have a specific resource to be highly available the first thing we want to make sure is that that resource is always accessible under the same name under the same host name, under the same IP address and basically the entity that is giving service to that specific resource might vary so it might be a specific node at one point in time and then it might be a different node at a different point in time but basically the entry point is going to continue being the same so to the uh, end user is like that specific virtual IP is always reachable no matter whether node ones go down or no ones go uh, for maintenance then that specific IP address is always going to be accessible that's a little bit different from what we're used to having as backup servers because it's not the same type of service um, there will be consequences like for example let's say you have a failure on one node that is doing uh, providing service then the state information is not gonna be available on the new node taking over the service so there might be state loss over the failover. It really depends on whether the application layer goes an extra step to replicate um, a stateful information between the nodes or to make the state information available through a database or an underlying um, shared file system but if it, we're just talking about memory state like sessions and that's not replicated between the nodes by any other means that that information might be lost or in failover. Um, we're talking that the clustered resource will be monitoring the service automatically and will be taking automatic decisions uh, on what is the best node to actually be running a specific resource. So most of these machines will be pretty much clones respecting software so any of those can be called to serve at any point in time and you the administrator the moment you configure the cluster will put some restrictions in place other as whether the call locations need to exist or the dependencies between servers needs to run but late, basically you leave 
let the cluster uh, code to take over from there and whether it detects a failure automatically do the failover for you so that can happen in terms of milliseconds the administrator doesn't need to be involved doesn't need to approve on anything you, you don't have that delay in fact there so very basic scenario you have three servers uh, you have a active resource running on one of them and then this machine has a power failure drive failure kernel panic anything and then this resource is move on to another node that will be servicing uh, that specific service but it will still be available under the same IP address so to the remote user what it looks like is this service was always online even though we experienced a failure we may even have a second failure and this resource might still be online we might just take one server down for maintenance and then this IP address will not be affected so the more nodes we added to the mix the higher the amount of uh, uptime that we're gonna get from it so I have a very basic very simple um, pacemaker setup running up here let me just show you what I have I have um, everything virtualized so I have a, a series of three different Ubuntu servers 10.04 running up here I'm gonna have a follow-up video on how about uh, deploying this setup um, as you can see I have right now within my cluster this is the status window for the cluster I have three nodes called node 1, 2 and 3 that are online and I have a specific resource which is just called IP uh, the IP address in question is this 192.168.78.145 it's currently running on node 2 uh, which should be this guy right here as you can see I can go into the CRM and uh, get a status from any of the uh, members in the cluster so they're all in sync they're all seeing the same page we have a designated controller which is node 2 uh, at this point so let's do something easy let's say I want to take node 2 for maintenance so I'm gonna go into node 2 and I'm gonna tell it uh, to stand by okay what happened there as you can see the resource right now is set up on node 1 did you even notice the failure no I didn't notice anything we're came back from a reply time of 1 millisecond down to 10 milliseconds so no pin loss, no packet loss, no completely seamless for us now it depends on the service you're running on top of this right if you're running a database you're running a, a web server, a file server then the application responds to that may vary because as I was mentioning before you may have state loss information but for for the most part we achieve uh, heavy, high availability there uh, let's say I, I want to take uh, node 2 online again after some maintenance I did then uh, this may go back to node 2 we did notice a failure there but very small very uh, not noticeable uh, let's say say something happens to node 2 uh, let's go crazy here I uh, have a command here. Mm, um, let's do something simple. Halt. Okay, so the system is halting now. We lost it. Okay, we can see right now that node 2 is gone offline. Uh, we have the resource running on node 1. So you can see no noticeable drop. No notice of problem on failure. And uh, yeah, node 2 is offline. Let's see what node 2 is doing. So, okay. Let's power it on. Let's get it back on the cluster. Okay. It should take a little while for it to boot up. Mm -hmm. 
you can see it's starting the chorusing demon automatically. Mm. Mm, let me get locked in here again. Okay. CRM, that stands for Cluster Resource Manager. Status, you can see it's online. It's going back to node 2. Uh, if you don't have a preference rule to alienate the resource with a specific server, then the cluster will try to keep the resource always on the same node. And it's choosing node 2 at this point in time because I have more RAM assigned to it. So the cluster decides that that's the uh, um, the best node for it to be running. So. Okay, so we crashed that. Let's say I want to migrate this resource for a specific migration. My resources are running load on um, node one. So one thing I could do is I could go to resource and I could do a migrate of IP down to node three. Okay. So you can see the resource right now is in node three. I still get connectivity, everything looks fine. Let me go ahead and kill node 3. I have... Where is it? I have a very nice command around here. Show. 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 Okay, so you can imagine all sort of different failures. You can imagine kill minus nine. You can imagine a module crash, your software crashing on you, or hardware failure, anything. Let me just be a little bit rude on this and and uh, choke the kernel a little. You can see we had uh, some bad response times. And uh, node 3 is gone online. The resource was migrated to node 2 after some hiccups. Uh, and if you look at node 3, it's all uh, junked. It's getting a kernel panic right now, so it's, it's dying on us. Um, Cluster was able to survive that pretty easily. Nothing major there. Um, let's reboot this guy to see what can get it back. So, how does how is this working? What is actually happening under uh, under the hood? When you see, for example, that this started on node two, what that actually means is um, we have we have an extra IP address set up on node two. So this IP address is basically migrated by a script um, that is run on demand by the cluster manager. Uh, those scripts, you can use it to pretty much control any service. You can control any application like Apache, like MySQL, like an FTP server, like anything you build. And then you can give it commands like start or stop or migrate. Um, from the cluster manager on different nodes and the cluster manager can monitor that daemon afterwards and if the daemon stops responding with errors or with unexpected messages then you can just start it on a different node or you can just stop it on that particular node and migrate um, you can as well invoke a feature which is called stun it which is, stands for shoot the other in the head to basically kill the box in case you're getting fail counts increasing or errors with a specific node let's say your Apache keeps crashing on a specific server so you don't want that server to be part of the cluster so you can basically kill it and there's a lot of other features that um, uh, you can use this case is a what you're seeing here is called a primitive is a 
very basic primitive for an IP address. You can have primitive for uh, a lot of things, and we're gonna have some follow-up videos on how to uh, create them. But this is basically just a primitive for an IP address. You can have primitive for databases, for web servers, for file servers, for a lot of things, and you can piggyback those primitive on top of uh, in this case the IP address so basically when you migrate the web server you migrate it with a specific IP so you always have an Apache instance running on top of that IP address and make sure that the IP address gets migrated first before the Apache so when the Apache shifts from one server to the other it moves with the same IP address all the time. So no matter whether it's running on node one, node two, or node three, then uh, it's always reachable to the to the clients on the same way. So you don't need to make any modification on the client level. The client can always contact the same uh, contact point, the same IP address, the same host name, and then you're doing all the high ability ability on the back end. It's completely transparent to the client perspective. Now this involves some further uh, consideration like if you're migrating the web server from one server to the other you want to make sure that all the files that you're serving are the same and if that means that your web server generates files on demand that means that you want to have a shared storage uh, beneath them to make sure that any write that happens on node 3 is then available to node 1 in the event that the failover was ha was uh, to happen, the same applies for a database. Let's say you have a database running and you're doing inserts to the tables, and that's going to your binary lock. You want to make sure that binary lock is going to be available on the other server. Uh, so when the database is boot up, then you have the same information. That way, you don't have any uh, lost state of the data. You will have lost state only in like transmissions that are being generated at that point and that is just in uh, memory information so uh, I hope you liked it I'm gonna have some more follow up videos we're gonna have OpenSips running on top of this we're gonna have Apache running on top of this we're gonna have MySQL so you can have different strategies of how to deploy the highly available cluster on, on Linux for those of you that use Heartbeat on the past um, Corosync and Pacemaker use a part of heartbeat but it's a different stack is a is more elaborated stack is is fairly newer so I would advise you to go to the pacemaker website uh, for cluster labs and you start reading on on it um, and um, getting yourself acquainted as you can see the installation is pretty easy you pretty much have um, packages for every distribution either you like Debian or RPMs or anything you can you can very least install it so uh, hope you find it uh, informative